Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Tuesday, May the 30th, 2023. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad to have you guys. Now, normally in my show, I do the markets and stuff, but this issue right now is so important that I'm going to cover it in this story about what's going on, and this is going to give you the details of this how important this vote is that's coming up on Wednesday and so I mean we're right on it right now this is the end of the month this is when Janet Yellen said we're gonna run out of of being able to pay our bills for the country what happens if we go over that deadline and we we fall over the cliff what happens if they this deal doesn't pass through or it's stalled or something like that or, or they have to go back to the negotiating tables and start all over again or whatever we're going to start to tread into uncharted territory and you know I mean this could have everything's primed the pump is primed I mean we've got a market that's so bloated we've got so much debt we could go into a debt nightmare a nightmarish scenario if they don't get something done on this and if the United States fails to pay their obligations uh, so that's what could happen a nightmarish scenario if the United States fails to pay their obligations and so that's why we're gonna go over this article and we're going to find out what's really going on with this and, and what's its chances of passing you know okay so uh, I mean we're going to go over it kind of slowly we're going to kind of pick this thing to pieces a little bit not great right now is what they're saying about this this whole thing not great right now McCarthy debt deal votes in question DeSantis slams it as totally inadequate uh, with the U.S. debt default projected for Monday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has precious little time to convince several GOP holdouts to come around and vote for a debt ceiling deal that has been widely planned by several conservatives. McCarthy's team thinks that they can avoid disaster at today's House Rules Committee at 3 p.m. today. However, uh, Republicans Chip Roy, Ralph Norman, and Thomas Massey, three conservatives who serve on the panel, may not vote for the rule, which allows the Physical Responsibility Act to come to the floor. So they might, if, if they don't allow it to come to the floor, even. So. This is how precarious, this is This is unlike anything we've seen before right now. This is moving, like I say, in uncharted territory at this point. Uh, all three of these have expressed reservations about the bill. It says, however, Massey may still back the rule, making him the key figure in today's drama, according to Punchbowl. Of course, of note, there are nine Republicans and four Democrats on the panel. So if Roy and Norman vote no, then Massey needs to vote yes for the bill to survive. So, so we're, we're talking about a bill that's in question of its very survival. It says, keep in mind, this fascinating exchange Massey had with reporters four months ago, our friend Eric uh, Wesson of Bloomberg asked Kentucky Republican if he would be a firewall on the rule committee. To make sure a clean debt limit increase never made it onto the floor. Here's Massey. He said, over the last 10 years I've been an advocate of regular order and trying to make things work, uh, trying to make this place work right, and I would be reluctant to try to use the Rules Committee to achieve le a legislative outcome, particularly if it doesn't represent a large majority of our caucus. So I don't ever intend to use my position on there to hold somebody hostage or hold legislation hostage. Meanwhile, 
Uh, House Freedom Caucus Chair Scott Perry is holding a press conference today, and here's the schedule of events. Uh, the conservative hardliners in the House Freedom Caucus will hold a news conference outside the Capitol to rally opposition to the deal. The House Rules Committee will meet to prepare the bill for floor action. The House will hold votes on unrelated bills giving whips on both parties their first chance to count votes in person. House Republican leaders will hold a closed door conference meeting where they will discuss the debt deal. GOP leadership feels that the primary, uh, the preliminary CPO score 2.1 trillion in savings over the next six year life of, of the included caps is something that they can get behind. That said, two, uh, after two years, the remaining four years of cap can be waived. And tomorrow, House Democrats will meet in a closed door caucus meeting where they will hear from the White House officials. McCarthy's plan is to argue that no other bill can save the federal government as much money as the current package and that Biden never wanted to negotiate in the first place. Assuming the legislation makes it to the floor, it is all about the math, reports Fox News' Chad Pergam, who one GOP source said things are not that great right now. So for passing the bill, even if it does get to the floor, Evidently, it's not a done deal, not by far. And you know, the markets have went up on thinking that this is a done deal. In fact, they've thought that all along. They, they think, okay, uh, this whole thing's just going to blow over. They're just going to sign some sort of a deal, and that'll be that. That's the way the markets are thinking. Those the markets haven't been affected. I'm going to tell you, if something breaks on this at the last minute, it takes them by surprise, phew, I hate to tell you guys what could happen. Because things are primed. The pump's primed. We've been through... This has been a Teflon market for so long that people think start to think, oh, it's always going to be this way. It's always going to go up or stay the same. Or People start to think. It's the way people start to think. But when panic sets in, it sets in suddenly. And when, you know, when bubbles burst, they burst fast. They grow slow kind of like a kid, you know, he's blowing bubble gum, you know, he's, he goes, it blows up real slow, but when it goes pop, it's all over his face, it's just pow, <laughs> uh, so what they're saying about it, they say, it may still get there, but the number of GOPers who may vote yes could be significantly lower than that, and they're talking about 180 votes here, uh, they thought, that there was going to be a hundred to to deliver 180 votes on the debt ceiling bill, but it, they're saying it may be significantly lower than that. And when they were asked how the vote count was looking, one senior House GOP source replied, "Not that great right now." Uh, Pergam was told that there are quite a few undecided votes but that Republicans should be able to score well over a majority of their majority. That said, fewer Republican yes votes, of course, means that the Democrats will need to make up the difference, which is a big if. Uh, now, the Republicans don't believe that the PAYGO provisions go far enough. Plus, they wanted a more significant clawback of IRS money. Again, the key to having the right cocktail of Democratic and Republican votes to pass the bill. What it looks like is anyone's guess. So basically what you're getting out of this is, this is a crapshoot. The whole thing. That's what I'm getting out of it right now. And we're on the edge of default. Default. Well, possibly for the first time ever. And the whole thing's a crapshoot. It's up in the air. It's a coin toss, basically, at this point. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of this. Let's move on. Uh, 
whoops, I didn't mean to move myself here. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, it says the Physical Irresponsibility Act eliminates funding for Joe Biden's army of IRS agents. That's what this tweet's about right here. Uh, it says the disastrous deal only cuts one billion three hundred eighty-nine million five hundred twenty-five uh, thousand. We promised to nix eighty billion. So So our country is it says right here now this is what Ron DeSantis had to say. He said our country is careening toward bankruptcy. And after this debt ceiling deal, it will still be careening toward bankruptcy. The deal green lights four trillion in new debt over the next year and half locks in inflated levels of spending from COVID and keeps 98% of the Biden uh, let's see show more we'll go there for a second it keeps 98% of the Biden IRS expansion okay well that was it right so uh, in the briefing, they emphasize that not everyone gets what they want. Well, that's that's a way to try to sway people who aren't getting what they want in the voting yes. By saying that. Not everybody gets what they want. According to one readout, uh, it says a big focus was the White House's view that Biden's negotiators successfully blocked the most dangerous GOP provisions from getting into the legislation. So I'll tell you, I'll just, this is what I'm getting out of the whole thing. This is all big crapshoot. And now we're on the verge of bankruptcy. And so that's why this is important, guys. And I'm going to reiterate this. What if it doesn't go through? What if they all have to go back to the negotiating table again? Well, they've wasted all this time. They had time to do all this. Months ago, they should have had all this done. And now we're on the edge of not being able to pay our bills. This is like a guy who, who who's already charged things on his credit card. And I'm going to tell you my position on it all. The debt right now, you're never going to be able to balance the budget and pay off the debt. You know? And, and so why quibble over a few billion here and there and let the economy fall over and then you're going to have to stimulate it back, into, back, back up again in order to get things going again? Why do that in the first place? Why not just go ahead, pass the deal, don't, be, don't try to pinch a penny because once you're in so deep, once you're over your head to a certain point, you got to keep swimming. <laughs> or you're going to sink and drown. And they're going to make the whole country sink and drown at this point. The time to fix this was back in 1914 when they started this stupid blinking Ponzi scheme. You don't fix it mid midstream like this. You don't take the tires off your car when you're going down the freeway. You pull into a service station first to fix it. Right now, we're, we're rolling down the freeway and they're trying to take the wheels off the car. Of course we're going to have a collision. It's not the time to try to... You can't balance the budget anyway. We're th over $30 trillion in debt, not counting unfunded liabilities. This is all unsustainable. So at this point, let the good times roll. Because we're heading toward an ultimate conclusion in all of this, and it's called hyperinflation. And we can drag our asses there the slow way, trying to sustain a system that's unsustainable, or we can just go ahead and accept the fact that the system is unsustainable and go ahead and just keep this thing rolling. In fact, my viewpoint on it is, if they were to just pump the money into the system high, wide, and handsome and just not a care for a world of inflation, forget about inflation. Let the inflation roar. Just pump her full of money and get this thing moving. 
stimulate other business, small businesses, give them small business loans, the banks start to make loans left and right, just create the money needed. Get the economy at full speed, what's called escape velocity. Get the economy going so fast that then when we hit, when we hit this wall, if we're going 900 miles an hour, when we hit the wall, we'll pierce right through the wall and keep right on going because the economy is so strong. And maybe we'll survive it. But if you destroy the economy by trying to conserve in a system that you can't conserve in anyway, then you're going to be going so slow. See, when I lived down in Florida, we used to have the winter time. The sand used to get really dry, you know. And when the sand got dry, it got powdery. And on the roads, the back roads, I used to travel the back roads down in Florida, there's white powdery sand everywhere, and it got really soft, and there'd be soft spots would develop. And it's just like quicksand, right? But now if you're timid, and you're driving your car, right? And across the road, and you've seen one of these soft spots ahead, and if you're timid and you went kind of slow through there, first thing you know, your axle would sink down into the sand, your front wheels, and you'd get totally stuck. And I mean, getting stuck in sand is absolutely the worst. It's like getting stuck in powder, right? But if you weren't timid and you hit the gas and you got the escape velocity, you got that car going really fast, you'd just go across that sand pit like it was nothing. And I did that so many times. I got the car going nice and fast, and I just kind of glided across that sand pit. And that's what we need to do with the economy. We need to get it up going so fast. Money's what makes it go. And see, that's what they were doing during COVID, and it caused some inflation. Then they got they got timid, and they got scared. Oh, inflation, inflation, we got to cut, cut, cut. No, 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 no. No, hit the gas. Hit the gas. And get us over this sand pit. That's what they need to do. You're not going to balance this. You can't balance this. We're over. We're like two hundred trillion dollars in debt. By cutting the debt, you're going to make the whole thing collapse. And then what? That's like stopping the car in the middle of the sand pit and trying to start from a stop. You're just going to sink. Am I making any sense? So yeah, I'm not for. But they're going to do what they're going to do. They have the choice. And if they they nix this deal by trying to be conservative with the amount of money that's out there, right? They're going to tend the whole of the United States economy into a tailspin that we might never recover from. A greater depression. And then they'll be sorry. And then they'll say, okay, now we got to pump the money in because we're in a depression. But it's too late. A dollar late, day late and a dollar short by the time they do that. So they're playing with fire here. And there's no sense in it. They're not being logical. They're fight, frightened of inflation. Well, they're going to get inflation anyway. They haven't beat inflation. They haven't even come close. It would require t raising interest rates to 20% right now to stop inflation. 5% ain't going to do it. Anyway, had my little rant about this. Thank you guys for listening to this show. Uh, I don't like the idea. Now listen, I'm going to tell you, I do not like the idea of just willy-nilly raising the debt ceiling and everything. But this is the mess we've got ourselves in now, and you got to follow through. That's just the way it is. If you don't follow through, you're in trouble. So the whole system really is wrong to, from the ground up. And what we should be is we should still be on a gold standard. We should have a backing for our currencies. Texas, I did a show on them, and they're taking the right direction as far as I'm concerned in Texas by making a gold-backed currency. But the problem is, is it ain't going to fly. You think they're going to give away their power to create money and make themselves rich and just create endless amounts of money? They got us where they want us. They're draining the money out of us and giving it to all their rich buddies. You know? And they're going to continue to do that. This system needs to go through this final conclusion which is a hyperinflation it'll it'll ex, it'll expunge all of the badness out of the system the hyperinflation will fix it all but it'll it'll destroy savers but you're getting your warning you know that your your, your saving is is going to get more and more uh 
worse if you save money. So you get your warning right now. And it's time for you guys who are savers to, to get off into something that's going to hold its value. And this is the time to do it. Uh, to get out of dollar denominated assets and get into something that is real and tangible. Something that exists in the real world and is worth, always going to be worth something. A little bit of fear out there amongst people of, of these assets because they say to themselves, well, uh, there's premiums and everything and I might lose money and if I have to sell it, blah, blah, blah. But if you looked at the alternative, what's coming? The saving in the dollar right because ultimately if they if they this thing does turn negative and the markets all turn negative they're gonna have to come into the rescue of the markets they just can't let the markets go down the sp death spiral of deflation they're gonna fix deflation no matter what they have to do and if that means printing trillions they'll print trillions listen guys thank you guys for listening to my show Hope I give you guys a better idea what's going on with the debt ceiling right now, and just how troubling this is, and just how just how just uh, how tentative this is. How this could all go either which way. They could pass something, or the whole thing could fall into the pit. It's a crapshoot. See you guys later. Bye bye, and have a nice afternoon.